So is the album that changed everything for Peter Gabriel. It took a left field experimenter with a pedigree and made him a multi-million record seller. And the best is that so came at the right time for Peter. When people had started doubting his commercial appeal, when it was time to show that he had his place in the changing music landscape. Tell me more. Hello, top potters and newcomers. Welcome to this new episode of my series on Peter Gabriel's albums. This is Simon Mas, your friend with a master degree in music and a couple of pressing questions. What's the story behind the making of So? And more importantly, do sales reflect the quality of the music on the album? Follow me through this video to find out. 1985, what a year. Music stars had made charity hip through single releases and one-shot events. Mega festivals had started popping up throughout the world. Old hands stepped onto each other's toes and new heroes populated the charts with slick productions while concerned parents were going to Washington. And Peter Gabriel, well, it didn't seem there was much room for him in this fast-moving carousel. A quiet fellow with his good manners, his slow working pace, his perfectionism, and yet. Peter had already changed pop music forever. His 1980s intruder had defined drum sound for the whole decade. His passion for world music helped make music contamination popular. His interest in samplers had opened new possibilities for everyone. And moreover, his former bandmates were doing really well in the charts. Maybe Peter could do the same? Charisma and Geffen, his labels in the UK and US, didn't pressure him, but I bet you too would have died to deliver a huge seller in that situation, a hit would repay all the people that had supported Gabriel this far, it would prove that he was still able to write music that could move units as well as inspire colleagues, and it could have confirmed Gabriel's privilege of working at his pace with all the artistic freedom he wanted. Hmm. Time to get involved. Gabriel started working on So in May 1985. Everyone immediately realized something was different. For a start, this was Peter's first album to have a proper title so that it could be promoted more effectively. And then the producer, Daniel Lenoir. Lenoir had impressed Gabriel when they worked on the Birdie soundtrack, and he had also co produced The Unforgettable Fire the album that turned you 2 into global superstars. I covered both records. If you want to know more, there's a link to both videos in the description. The initial sessions for So were a three-headed affair. Gabriel Lenoir and guitarist David Rhodes rehearsing Peter's ideas, alone in the recording room. There was a lot of improvisation around the material Gabriel had prepared. It was an important change in his routine. It helped Peter speed up the development of songs by immediately showing him what parts didn't work the way he wanted. But that wasn't the only change. On 4, Gabriel had focused on rhythms and sounds. On Birdie, he looked for feeling and atmosphere. Now, he was interested in crafting well-rounded songs. And as these songs grew, the attention turned to the arrangements, with musicians all the new being called upon to record their parts. The resulting pieces were, well, the songiest songs Gabriel had written in a long time. Let's talk about them. The new songs could work well on the radio. They were shorter, poppier, with classic song structures. They weren't a complete U-turn to what Gabriel had done before, naturally. For example, a foro rhythm. Foro is a musical genre originating from northern Brazil, inspired Mercy Street. Nowhere in the corridors of pale green and gray. 
and Senegalese superstar Yusundur sang a background part in In Your Eyes. But there were other influences too, more accessible and less exotic. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, shall we? Sledgehammer is deeply featuring the original Otis Redding's horn section. The lyrics are a bundle of funny double and tender, a very Gabriel take on love, like his 1978 Modern Love or Genesis 1974 Counting Out Time. The song is explosive. And thanks to its great stop motion video, it dominated MTV. Sledgehammer went straight to the top of the Billboard charts, Gabriel's first and only single to do that, the throning Invisible Touch by Genesis. Big Time on the other side of the record is just as exciting, easily the funkiest song on so. <laughs> The whole album is like a 1986 pop take on Gabriel's previous work. Cymbal's return on a Gabriel's record, it's actually one of the first things you hear. And Red Rain, so's opener, also saw the return of Mozo, the protagonist of a cycle of songs that Gabriel had been developing from his first solo album. We do what we're told, it's like Lead a Normal Life 1986. And I could go on and on, but I have to keep this short. Let's close the section with the other huge hit then. Don't give up. I have to admit, I have a controversial opinion on this one. Yes, it's a showstopper and a heartfelt message of hope at the dire time for workers in the UK, but I don't like it. Go to jail. 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 The electric piano with the soul chops feels stuck on top of the synth pads. The doubling of Kate Bush's voice diminishes the truthfulness of the message for me. It sounds a bit too constructed. It's like different elements that had worked elsewhere in Gabriel's discography were thrown together into the Don't Give Up cauldron to make a soup, but the final dish needed another five minutes on the stove to be perfect, so to speak. A bit more tweaking to taste as well as it should have. Now, I know you'll hate me and this video just for this, but you can just tell me your view on so and don't give up with a comment. Teach this bozo a lesson. If you appreciate my honesty instead, please share the video with your friends or just give it a thumb up. And if you like my other videos too, please consider sending me a tiny tip via PayPal. It helps me pay the bills and it will make sure that I keep producing more and better free videos for you. Thank you. What else can you listen to with a similar vibe to so? Well, so's clean production and sound always reminded me of Sting's Nothing Like the Sun. You can also give a chance to Invisible Touch by Genesis, or to Hounds of Love by Kate Bush, and for something a bit from the left field, Sky Larking by Ecstasy sounds warmer than so, but it shares its arty approach to pop. Well, that's enough suggestions for now. This, my dear Top Patters, was your Simon Mas. Stick around for more music-related tales. For the moment, stay cool and keep your Top Hat on. Bye!